Hi, oh, it's the 18th of July 2018 at 1.30 p.m. I had a long p.m. Uh, with one of the guys on the channel last night. Three, four hours, something like that. Um, and we just talked about this, that, and everything else. And it was just, it was good. You know, it was, you know, his his cam was good. His, his internet's good. You know, there's no problems. And he just sat there. He's having a drink. I wasn't. I haven't had a drink now for a week. And... I don't have any anyway. So, yeah, so he was having a drink and I wasn't. It just didn't bother me. And we were just chatting, 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 chatting. And I, I, at the end of it, I thought, okay, what the hell's going wrong here? Why can't chicks do this? Actually, why can't other guys do this? Uh, and I just, I, don't know, I thought about it. And then after, after we finished the conversation, I went back into the, into the, my room, and I just, I just said, you know, I've just had a three-hour conversation with, with a guy in on, you know, in PM, and one of the chicks said, "Oh, are you bi, are you?" And I said, "No, it's talking. That's not a sexual thing. We're just, just to, and, and I said, don't people get together at coffee shops and restaurants or anything? You know, like when I was a young guy, I would often go and talk for hours, you know, over you know, with other guys or." I don't think there were so many women then, I can't remember, it was mainly guys. And um, and she said, uh, and, uh, and she said, oh, look, chicks just can't hold a conversation. Because the thought of, you know, even, you know, some of the girls in the, in the room, you know, in the chat room just said, oh, PMs get boring after one minute, uh, don't never go there. Um, and I thought, well, I've just, you know, I've just had a three hour conversation with, with a bloke and you know, we had a pretty good time. There's no sex or anything. Uh, and I didn't even have alcohol. So I thought, what the hell's going on? And I got to thinking, oh, I don't know, maybe I've just got some something that's, uh, I don't know, you know, it's just sort of like, you know, I've, I've actually been trying to scramble for the idea of, of, you know, what the hell is it I've got that others don't have, you know, how come I can comfortably have a conversation for two or three hours, no problems. And others can't. Anyway, the penny dropped this morning. I think it was something that Jay Lord said to me, or maybe it was something else. You were having a discussion about, yeah, about convincing. That's right. We're talking about, and I was, I was trying to say, yeah, I don't go into the narc zone. Yeah, uh, we're not debating. Oh, it was about uh, human nature. I'm, I'm, I'm saying that no, people are doing stuff for reasons other than human nature. He's saying now it's human nature that's making them behave in a certain way. And, and we've been sort of, um, the same sort of thing happens with James, I think. I think that's sort of the discussion we're having. You know, it's, it's uh, yeah, me against the guys, you know, and, and they're saying, no, it's human nature, and I'm trying. But actually what's happening is because we're all getting along and whatever, we're trying to convince one another. And and I thought, yeah, well, that makes sense because, you know, we're not, we're not getting into, see, a debate sort of connotates a win-lose situation. You've got to wrap it up at the end of, you know, a certain period. You, you, this, the, you know, the opposition lost, the, uh, the government won. Yep, uh, there you go. And we're not like that, you know. And as, as I said to Joe this morning, we could be arguing about this, in, you know, or discussing it, not arguing, discussing it in five years' time. And I could be 99% convinced he's right, but I'd still like to leave the window open. And he'd be happy for me to leave the window open and say, yeah, look, you're still in hope that it might not be human nature. And, you know, we, we, but we can have a very amicable conversation and relationship through it. There's none of this heated debate. That's what I'm getting at. And, you know, we're achieving it through convincing. So I thought about that. And also, there was something happened last night because the, the, the guy I had, had the PM with, his word wasn't problem. His word, he had another word. His was expectation. He used the word expectation over and over again. And it got me to thinking, oh, look, maybe I'm trying to sort of sell this idea, a problem, and uh, maybe, maybe it's just how I do it. You know, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. You know, maybe, maybe I should rethink all of this, find out what everybody's word is, and, and get them to create conversation around that. Uh, and I went to bed, I thought, oh, I uh, forget the whole thing, do something else. It's it's all too difficult. And as I said, I woke up this morning and, and and I was talking to Jay 
and then it finally hit me. And I mean, we like to think we're fairly smart, don't we? You know, the, you know, we're quick. Yeah. yeah. What I'm actually discussing here, problem, convince, negotiate. Yeah, it's all about sales. It's all about selling. That's what you do. You identify a problem that a customer has, convince him that you have a solution, and you might have to negotiate a bit. That's it. It's selling. And I looked at it and I thought, yeah, I've worked this from the bottom up. I've, 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 instead of saying it's selling and then go down, you know, I've actually I've, I've pulled out... Yeah, you, <laughs> First thing I did is you don't do any of these things when you're selling. You can do them if you want to, but don't expect to make a lot of sales. I mean, lecture your customer sometime or criticise them. Demand or boss them to, to you know, or, or put them down. Yeah, boast how good you are. That always goes down. Complain about your customer. Good idea. Accuse them of, of, of you know, shopping somewhere else or something. Why don't you attack and threaten them? You know, demonise your customers. Yeah, fight and argue with them. Get right down to it, bully them, and justify why you bully them. That's an idea, go try, get all the department stores, all the, all the selling operations, you get them to do all those things. I bet you don't get one thing through. They'll just say, just fuck off. <laughs> and now, up here, yep, yeah, I'd reckon most, most sales people say, yep, yeah, all of those things, yep, yeah, good. They'd probably add a few more things I haven't got in there. Yeah, but they'd say, yeah, do all of that, agree with your customer, inform them, explain to them, talk to them, you know, maybe share a joke with them, a story, give them a bit of news, you know, like a newsletter or something, yeah. Invigorate, you know, get their interest up, yeah, inquire, discuss, find out about them, find out about their problems, show an interest in them. Maybe you'd be, be a bit entertaining. Why don't you even take them out to dinner? You know, I've heard salesmen do that, you know. They call up their customers and they hey, you want to go out for a meal? Yeah. And entertain them, and they, you know, they're pleasant. They don't go out there and lecture them and criticise them, manipulate them, you know, none of that, no, 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 no. No, actually, a good salesman will do all of those things. And more. I mean, you know, you, you can, you know, we can talk about it. But yeah, you, you'll be trying to look for the problem that you've got, or, you know, that, that, and how he can or she can help you, and then convince you, you know, that how they can help you. And maybe they negotiate a little bit, you know, work a bit here, work a bit there. And actually, looking back at the, most of the conversation I was having with this guy last night, I was actually trying to sell AB and assisters in an amusing way. And I was trying, you know, he was, he was saying that, oh, no, there's too much expectations, they want something. And I, I was looking at his house and thinking, where, where does AB sleep and, and where are, are her sisters going to go? I mean, we're just joking about it. But I was trying to identify that he's probably, you know, trying to find out some sort of problem that, you know, oh, I don't know, I could have made it up. All right, and then convince him that, that that you know that AB is the way to go and also negotiate look maybe maybe the two sisters that come with AB can share a room how about we do that instead of giving them a, sep a room each they can share the same room how about that I don't know, just in an amusing context I mean it's not going to do it That's, none of it's going to happen but we can just make it up and, and fabricate some sort of problem with it and, and it's really it, it, and I found that's what I was doing and that's what I do most of the time I actually create problem situations. I even create situations in our minds, or my mind, with friends, you know, that are just so problematical. Uh, like, I was trying to sell the concept today that, uh, uh, to, to Bri, that, that one of us could marry Blossom, and she could, she could move to Australia, or first we'd make a lot of money, and then one of us could marry Blossom, it didn't really matter which one, and we could get AB and her, and her sisters to come in as housekeepers. So, you know, and that's, I mean, can you imagine the, you know, the problems and the chaos that that, would, that situation would create? And I, you know, I complicated it and compounded it, made it even more. And, and, and then we just, you know, we, we just, I discussed with him in PM, you know, how we could solve these problems once we created them. But I mean, it all just leads for an amusement, you know, just for fun. And none of it will happen, of course. But, you know, we just piss ourselves laughing, imagining one of us marrying Blossom and, you know, and having AB come in to do the, the housework. I said to, to, to Brian, there's no need to worry about, uh, yeah, because I said yeah, we'd end up spending most of our time in the dog box. And then I reconsidered my idea and I thought, well, no, I don't think we would because I actually think we would be spending most of the time doing the housework and the chores because the girls would be too busy at one another. Yeah, so, I mean, but I made up a whole, a whole conversation about it. That's created. I, I've, I created the problems mentally. They're not real problems. They don't exist and never will. 
But I just created, I just thought, just imagined a problem, you know, have it, we both marry, one of us marry Blossom, or both, and just have A, B and her sisters in as house, house keeping staff. You know, I mean, just imagine it. And uh, the problems and, and, and that would ensue from that were just amazing. But, but that was the fun of it. That was the, the entertainment value in it. But it was me trying to sell him on that idea. Yeah, I was pitching the idea to him. It was be totally crazy. Okay, let's look at something else. Um, uh, let's look at Hot Girl. Hot. Uh, it is trying to, you know, okay, she's trying to move in here somewhere. Let's say she's trying to sell herself. All right, let's, let's just look at, look at Hot. You know, she's, she's told us that she's hot. You know, she's down here boasting. Um, yeah, pretty much boasting that she's hot. But she may probably be just joking. I don't know. It's unimportant. Joking or not, it's probably coming across as in the dark zone. Now, how would Hot sell herself to someone? Well, to begin with, if she was sort of halfway serious, wanting to find a friend on here, she might try and think of who has she got the most chance of being having as a friend. Well, I'm too old. Um, oh, let's cut straight to the chase. I think Seth would possibly could be a could be a friend. I'm not talking about lovers or any of that shit. No, just a friend, someone to talk to. All right. Um, I think roughly the same age and that sort of thing. Now, Seth could be. So how did how did hot sell herself to Seth. I mean, she got off at six. Yeah, boring. Okay. Yeah, we don't do that in this channel. So, what you do is you cut out the sex bit. Right? Just forget that. That's how this thing works. You just, you just, it's not an option. Don't go there. Just forget it. You've got to go up here. Do something else. So, you might have to try, I, I, my first thought was, if I was in, uh, in Hot Girl's uh, shoes, I'd make friends with Emily. That's what I'd do. I'd get in Emily's good book, mm -hmm. and then I would use that as a lever to get to Seth. Um, yeah, maybe. Which would be better for Emily because she doesn't really want the competition and she doesn't want the shit. So yeah, she'd be just as happy to have someone to talk to. And, and uh, I mean, you don't have to be the best buddies or great friends or anything, but but more on friendly terms. So so take the competition out of uh, because Seth is is Emily's brother, hot girl. Yeah. And then that's that's probably the way I would do it. I, I would take, and this is something I should explain too in my, my selling, my virtual selling, my, my mental selling. I'd, I'd pick up scraps and pieces of information and try and form them into something. Yeah, so, so there you go. And also I know that uh, Emily's brothers are into cars and fixing things. So you could talk about cars, I'd reckon. That, that'd fall, that would be showing an interest in him. Uh, you know, just think of Seth as your customer. All right. I mean, and if his if his main interest is cars, yeah, well, we can guarantee there's some sort of problem or something like that. Or yeah, just get involved in that. Talk about that. Find out about his cars and all, all that sort of thing. I mean, okay. So, admittedly, it's boring to you. And this is the problem. Okay. So, what you do is you change things around a bit. You find an amusing twist on it. You don't just sit down and fuck cars are boring. I mean, you find a twist on it. You find a, you, you turn it around. You. You've got cars, you've got to sell something about yourself, and you've got cars. Or it could, there could be something else. But that's what you do. You, you, know, you don't get out in here and it's just, you saw what happened, it just pisses people off. That's the truth of the matter, unfortunately. Yep, and this is what I'm trying to say. If you want to sell yourself as being a good person, fun to be with, talk to, that sort of thing, don't go down here. No salesman in the world does it. Oh, you got those that, you know, reverse it, you know, stuff there. No, no salesmen are good, you know. They're, they're there to try and... Yeah, they're up here doing this sort of stuff. Because they want to, they want you to like them and they want, you know, they want a good win-win situation. Uh, now, just on, the, on a final note, I think the problem here, believe it or not, and this, this will be a bit contentious, but I'm going to postulate a reason why chicks don't do this selling technique. And um, that reason is chicks tend to toe the line for government. And government don't sell. Government do this. By and large. So if, whereas guys tend to be more rebel, 
and we tend to be not so government focused or orientated. Yeah, we follow the rules and everything, but government is not the love of our life. Uh, we tend to be more free. Uh, we like to yeah, run our own race. Chicks need government because they need security, maybe. So, yep, they're going to pay homage to government and they're going to behave like government. And that is why they can't create selling conversation. Because government doesn't sell. It, it does all of these things. It, it actually lays down the law. Yep, it was done this way. That's the, 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 the nature of government. It doesn't sell anything to people. Okay, and so chicks following government are following a line of, and, and this is why, and it's becoming, it's becoming more and more separate. We're seeing it actually in politics. You know, we've got one side who, I mean, led by probably one of the, arguably one of the greatest salesmen, whether you like him, hate him, or anything else like that. Yeah, you know, he's a salesman. He sells things, big buildings. Okay, versus people who don't sell things, other than arms, and it's you know. Uh, Yep, I suppose that's one way to, to create, you know, to create a market is to sell war. Uh, but no, this this guy up here, is, he sells buildings and nice things and peace. All right, so, and this is what happened. We've got we've got one one group selling war, and that's what's actually happening with us at the moment. We're getting warred on. We're in the war zone. Call it a war zone. It's not an arc zone. It's war. Look at it, blood. Um, yeah, so. If you get my drift, that's that's what's happening. Yep, we're following government and what's what's happening in the world at the moment. The idea is to get up here and sell, have fun selling to one another. Doesn't matter. Just make up crazy ideas. Just sell. Just just sell. Don't don't berate and bash. Okay, and I'm lecturing here, and I don't want to do that. So it's been good talking to you. And I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.